What's up again guys? Yeah, it's me, your friendly neighborhood Dovakin and welcome back to Let's Play Wasteland 3. And uh, before we begin, be sure to hit on the subscribe button for more great videos. Okay, in the previous vid, we had a couple of non-lethal battles. Well, for the first one, we talked our way out of it. But for the latter, we owned it in absolute perfection. And uh, these are all part of the Factory Fracas quest, one of the main missions here in Steel Town, wherein we're trying to assemble a warbot to breach the foundry in order to get to Celine Crow, the leader of the workers. And uh, we're here at the last station of the assembly line, so let's meet the opposition. Mind you again, this is Supreme Jerk Mode, the hardest difficulty. But since episode 11, my squad never got damaged in combat. But this is a pacifist run, wherein I have no choice but to use disruption weapons, making this fight even harder by tenfold. So stick around to find out if we're gonna come out of this perfectly unscathed as well. Now, as per my strat. First, you need to take out the worker safety chief here at the south, cause he can buff his crew with some sort of energy shield. Next, equip your squad with disruption traps, and I don't need to explain how important this is. Also, you may want to use decoys to divert enemy fire. Then lastly, Understand how the power loader slash mech works. On its first turn, it will lock on to one of your characters, which is indicated by the called out debuff. On its next turn, it will then seek and destroy that ranger with a melee attack, and everyone in its path will take damage, much like a raging vehicle. So uh, move your called out guy away from your squad. Now, here's the trick. If you have ice spikes, you can throw one of them in the path of the power loader. And I don't know how the hell it works, but it just fucking does. Watch.
on your neck, oppressor! Flanking the target.
awaits your order to cut through it. That was the last interaction with Newt. Alright, back in episode 32, up on the admin level, Ivan, one of the researchers, gave us the gift of the Magi quest. And uh, my reason for siding with him, even though his prototype is more inhumane than BF's, his rival researcher, is because of his reward. The recipes for the Elite Energy Exo armor set. Warbot. You turn a warbot on your own workers, you sick fuck! Think of it as the world's biggest can. Let's melt that foundry door, and uh, take note of my choices. Fucking A, you did it! I thought you guys were never coming back. This is great. You good to start cutting? Because I'm ready to end this. Great. Now here's the plan. Aim that laser at the door and start cutting. When it's open, me and the bots will go in first with you covering us. Then you follow. Shoot anybody that resists. But Crow is mine. Rangers, before we proceed, the Warbot is programmed to respond to threats automatically. If we bring it into the Foundry, it will use lethal force against anyone who threatens us, which would go against Administrator Markham's wishes. If you want to keep the option for non-lethal measures open, 
I can disable the warbot after it blasts through the door. Shall I? Understood. I will not adjust it. Good choice, Rangers. You lost your chance to talk to Markham when you started this shit, you fucking vandal. We started it? Who's the one who charged us by the minute to visit our families? Who made us pay for first aid? You've been robbing us blind, motherfucker. You're getting fat off our misery. So I don't deserve something for breaking the rules for you? The computation engine says no one leaves the factory till quotas are met. It says one bathroom break per shift. What's wrong with taking a small fee to let you ignore that bullshit? What a humanitarian! Making a bad situation worse so you can profit off of it! And now, you're bringing in hired guns to kill us for striking against it all. How can you assholes stand with that creep? Hey, I just told them to get things moving again. I didn't tell them how to do it. You can't pin that on me! That's bullshit and you know it, Ludlow! A robot doesn't do anything you don't tell it to! At least we got some mercy from you guys. You didn't kill any of my people. Unlike asshole here. It started when Markham hired Ludlow and sicked him on us. All of a sudden, things that had been rights were now privileges. Privileges we had to pay for! Need to go to the bathroom? Pay Ludlow. Wanna see your kids? Pay Ludlow. Have an accident on the floor and need medical attention? Pay Ludlow. I told you, I was helping you out. Giving you a way around Markham's rules. For a small fee, of course. Fuck off, you slime. We don't even know if they are Markham's rules. Cause the one thing we couldn't pay you to do was take our grievances upstairs. No amount of money was enough to get us a face-to-face -face with the boss, was it? The boss doesn't need to be bothered with your petty bullshit. Particularly when we need to be cranking out warbots and turrets to protect ourselves from the coming of the gangs. She gave me the authority to handle you. And you abused that authority! You beat my workers half to death when we went on strike! You put Danny Chan's hand in the hydraulic press! He'll never work again! Oh, yeah? Oh, boy. I can't wait. Your call on this one, Rangers. I just don't know. Hell I am. Nobody runs this place but me. Robots, kill these fucking mercs. Before anything else, I just love this song. It's the theme of Steel Town. Power in the Union by Joshua James from the Hymns and Ballads OST of the game. And uh, by listening to it, it's obvious who the real protagonists of this expansion are. The Workers. And that is why I sided with Crow. Besides, as opposed to Ludlow's description of her in the last episode, Crow is not an anarchist. She's just fighting for what is right. The workers just want to be heard. And it turns out that Ludlow here is really just an absolute scum. By the way, that's the reason why I told Dai to keep the warbot operational after blasting through the door. Cause I was planning to decimate Ludlow's ass all along. And uh, in case you haven't noticed, before entering the foundry, 
my squad was already fully equipped with our conventional weapons. So someone's gonna die today. Well, it's not Ludlow. Cause, uh, you know, this is a pacifist run. But for the bots, there are no holds barred. Anyway, because this is Supreme Jerk, as you can see, Ludlow here has a whopping 10k plus HP. The biggest I've seen so far. Even beefier than those gigantic Scorpichons. But don't worry. If you focus fire on him, he will surrender along with his bots. Once his HP goes down to one third. Though that is still nearly 7k worth of damage. But again, don't fret. Cause I got this. For a second. You want the factory to fail so bad? Crow can have it. Now what's it gonna be for me? Don't suppose I'm uh, free to go, huh? Fuck. Guess it beats getting dead. This is Ranger HQ Actual. Come in, Team November. Team en route, November. Ranger HQ out. Thanks for taking out Ludlow. I don't think we would have beat him by ourselves. Now, are you gonna take our demands to Markham, or are we gonna have to do this dance all over again? For this entire map, no damage at all. A disruption weapon for the Kodiak. Pretty much useless actually.
Luna Moon's name appears on this document. The Whammon in the Northern Room near the first Warbot Assembly, which I featured in the previous vid. So uh, let's ask her about this. Anyhow, a bug note. Don't exit or reload your game after getting this form. Or uh, was it after the Ludlow slash Crow fight? Cause uh, Luna will vanish from the game. How's it look out there? <sighs> what? Let me see that. Oh, that little dipshit, goddammit! Hayes, the HR admin, must have torn this up and hit it. I told Serena he had a crush on her. So, Serena Ash, she's the deployable salesperson up in admin, and also my girlfriend. We filled out this fraternization clearance form so we could make it official. Serena took it to Hayes to submit, and I'd bet anything he tore it up and hit it. You get caught trashing an official Steel Town document, and you're out on your ass. But what kind of lunatic looks inside a toaster? Er, uh, sorry. <laughs> Listen, talk to Serena, let her know I'm okay, and if you find the other half, ask her what to do with it. Hooray! <laughs> Thank you. If all goes well, I'll see you upstairs soon. Before we go upstairs to report back to Abigail Markham, let's meet a reunited mother and daughter. Hey! Rangers! It's me! I made it! Oh. And I'm Ellen. My daughter told me what you did for her, Rangers. I can't express how thankful I am. Though, a handful of tellurium might help communicate my feelings. Use it how you see fit. Boy, did I need that last dose Newt brought me. I was pretty ragged after hiding out during the strike. Not sure what we'll do for the next dose, but we'll figure it out together. I read you, Rangers. Thanks again. Thanks. Resolve the situation in the factory. This just confirms my suspicions. The computation engine highlighted Ludlow as a peacemaker and negotiator. Something's definitely gone wrong with it. So the workers are back to work? Fine, I'll talk to her. Just as soon as we start getting things out the door again. You've done good work. Let me pay you for it. But don't go anywhere. I have another job for you. Before I handed the creation of the computation engine over to Die, it was the project of my partner Blue. Sadly, Blue and I had a little falling out over design decisions, and now he's my ex-partner. Anyway, when he left, he stole a gizmo called the Synaptic Degausser, which is the only tool that can fix the engine without me having to redesign it from the ground up. And there's no way that's happening before the gangs get here. So get me back to the Gausser, and you get another paycheck. Oh, and you better take Di with you again. She knows what the damn thing looks like. Out in the scrapyard someplace, leading some other ex-workers of mine who've decided to get back at me for my crimes by vandalizing my factory and stealing my shipments. The refugees out there call them the Ghost Gang because no one knows where their hideout is. I call them losers. Couldn't hack real work, so now they're playing at bandits. Pathetic. They tried to steal a war bot. Let me see that. Remember, Jay, 6040 means 60 for me, 40 for you, XOXO B. Who the hell is B? I should have guessed. That girl's friendly demeanor is thinner than an onion skin. Here's a little something for catching this. 
Losing a warbot would have been serious business. Unfortunately, I can't fire Benny just yet. Until I get the CE fixed, she's the closest thing I've got to a facilities manager. Afterwards, however, I'll have her escorted from the building without a coat. Well done, Rangers. Now, what were we talking about? So long. All right. Now we got the next main quest of this DLC, Steel Town Blues, which is all about Blue and his Ghost Gang. Anyway, as you saw, although I told Benny Bianchi back in episode 32 that I wouldn't rat about her warbot smuggling, I broke my promise, and it earned us 10 Tellurium Steel Bars. Okay, let's finish the Gift of the Magi quest and get our awesome reward from Ivan. Hey, uh, you get the biometric governor out of BF's dumbass machine and installed in my prototype yet? Hell to the yeah! I'll get it up and running in two shakes! It'd be rad if you guys saw my presentation after helping me out like that. Just let me know when you're ready and we'll get it on Markham's agenda. I'll pay you as soon as Markham signs off on it. Hell yeah, dudes! <laughs> I'm pumped! BF will go first and fuck it up, then I'll rock Markham's face off! Greetings, Administrator. I will now present my project. It is titled EEG Driven Sleep Productivity Induced. I'm ready. The average admin worker spends 29.645% of each day unconscious. My EEG system reads their brain waves during REM sleep and then stimulates feedback through minimally invasive neuroelectrodes. As a result, workers can collate data and execute basic clerical functions while dreaming. Interesting. That could be extremely valuable. If it works. To demonstrate, I will induce sleep in myself with anesthetic. Please observe the work terminal at my station. Biometric governor to avoid using feedback. She's now in a vegetative state. This Administrator Markham, I set out with one simple goal, change the world, and damn it, I did just that, presenting the Worker Incentive System. Get to it, Ivan. Right, uh, yeah, um, <clears throat> uh, as you know, we lose three man weeks a day to meal breaks. What if instead, workers got their nutrition at their stations as a reward for meeting quotas. Drive five rivets, out pops a pellet. Weld a joint, out pops another. Intriguing. Show me. So you just strap on the feed bag, and when a goal is met, a little pellet is automatically dispensed for the worker to chow down on. Hmm. Huh, good. Approved for production at a minimal pilot capacity. Hell yeah, bros! Marker was all like, oh shit, Ivan, this is revolutionary! Couldn't have done it without you. So, here's what I owe you. Rumor about BF, though. Didn't know it would fire like that, but she should have put in some safeguards. Before we talk to Serena Ash, Luna Moon's GF, take note of Amos Ryan here. He is the armor merchant, but uh, don't ask him to test out his merch, cause uh, you'll accidentally kill him. By the way, as per the three merchants in this floor, these two and Wink Tillman at the west, trading will only become available after finishing the Factory Fracas quest. Hey cats, I'm Serena Ash. Your one-stop shop for deployables, pick-me-ups, and other useful sundries. What do you need? You saw her? She's safe? 
Holy hell, thanks for that. How the hell did the form end up torn in half? And where's the other half? Ah, yes. I, I mean, thank you, Rangers. Keep smiling, friends. All right. Let's report back to Demi to finally close the working stiff side quest. <clears throat> Welcome back. It says here, fire was successfully suppressed, for a while at least. Also, more importantly, Keith has finally clocked out. <laughs> what a relief. Here's your fire suppressor bonus. Want to look for another job? Super! I'll be here when you're ready for an exciting career in, uh, well, whatever the computation engine deems you capable of doing. Come back soon! Now let's check up on the refugees outside of the gates. Sugar Plum Mary here is one of the elves that we rescued from the tyrannical Santa back in episode 16. Let's ask her how she's doing. Uh, hello? Oh, hey rangers. What are you doing out here in this abominable snowman's land? At least you got work. We've been looking for employment since you freed us from Santa's sweatshop. Heard there were good jobs here, but Jiminy Christmas, it's hard to pass the application test. Well, it's certainly a relief not to be wearing a bomb collar anymore. But it's pretty tough on an elf out here in the big wide world. Not as many cookies, for one. Thanks! You too! And the serial killer strikes again. Rangers? Any more word on the situation in the factory? What? Wait! Let me see that! She, she died because she couldn't afford to pay for a gas mask? <laughs> Since when do factory workers have to pay for their own safety equipment? This is... Oh, God damn it! Florinda! I never should have brought you here! God damn it! God damn it! I'm sorry, Ranger. I can't, I can't, I can't talk right now. We didn't get a note, or anything written for that matter, about Florinda's death. What we got in the previous vid was her actual recorded message saying that she's alive and well. But as you saw, that option did not exist in the dialogue with Louise. The devs are aware of this bug, an unfinished script. However, they are not planning to fix it anytime soon, because I think the current patch 169.420 is the last one. Going back to her message, it doesn't make sense that she went on an early retirement with benefits, mind you, without showing up to Louise. So I theorized that what she really had was an affair, then ran away with her new lover. And since this narrative is unfinished, we can practically make anything out of it. So I think telling Louise that his wife is dead is much better than him knowing her betrayal. Again, this is just a theory, but either way, poor Louise. Anyhow, stay tuned in for the next episode. And that is all there is for now, thanks for watching. Also check out other videos from Sabbathman Philippines 
and don't forget to subscribe. See you on my next vid. Peace out, y'all.